This is a Techno Camon C9 camera review. The Camon series are Techno phones that are camera focused and this year's installment is the Techno Camon C9. But before we get into the camera, here are a few features of this phone. It has a 5.5 inch 1080p HD screen and it runs on Android 6.0 Marshmallow plus high OS on board. It comes with a MediaTek 6735 chip, an octa-core processor powered by a 3000mAh power battery. My main focus of this review will be its camera. At the front we have right in the middle there a huge 13 megapixel camera plus LED flash. And at the back we have another 13 megapixel camera this time with a dual LED flash system. The Camon C9 comes with a dedicated camera button on the side that can be used to bring up the camera up by long pressing it whether the screen is off or not which is pretty handy. Talking about the camera app, it is pretty simple to use since it doesn't have many features to play around with which is perfectly okay for the average user who just wants to take a quick snap. In terms of how it focuses on objects, it has autofocus which I have to say is quite snappy as you can see. It easily identifies the closest object to it and focuses on that while blurring the background. It also has touch to focus abilities where you can specify on certain objects to focus on. Those who pre-ordered the Camon C9 also received another accessory with their patches. What I'm talking about here is the T-Band. This is Techno Stick on a simple fitness band and phone accessory. It has a simple design as you can see with an adjustable silicone strap. But what I want you to focus on is the button on the band that is dedicated for taking pictures. While in the app you can press the button to take pictures. Selfies can be a bit awkward using this, but taking shots with the back camera is pretty handy. Just place the phone somewhere, not too far away, and take a picture. Now what kind of pictures can you take with the Camon C9? As you can see, you can capture quite a huge amount of real estate with this camera, which is pretty awesome for landscape pictures. But my main quarrel with this camera is overexposure. Take a look at this picture, the sky has been completely blown out and this didn't just happen once. This shot was taken in a somewhat low light area and without any focus points, by that I mean touch to focus, it looks pretty close to real conditions. However, when you touch to focus on one area, you get this overly bright picture that loses a whole ton of details. The same thing happened when taking macro shots. When you touch the screen to better focus on the flower, it's completely blown out and the details are lost. For example, the purple on the top is completely gone, which is a shame. But how then does it perform in very low light areas where overexposure might be welcomed? The dual LED flashlight system kicks in, but so does the noise. The picture is very grainy, but I think the LED flash did a good job lighting up the area. Now for a more practical low light area condition like indoors, I was very impressed by how it performed. It kept colors really true to form, for example the blue of the sky and the yellow of the support beams, while really keeping a lot of details of the people and the objects all around. Let's move on now to the big selfie camera. I am not a big selfie fan, but a 13 megapixel front camera shooter is something that really grabs your attention. It's fairly simple to use and has a number of cool features especially in post-production to use. Ladies, this one is for you and uh, maybe dudes, I don't know, I'm not judging. But after taking a selfie, you can go right into modifying your look in the app. You can put on full face makeup if you want and share that wherever. I found this really fun to play around with. The selfie camera boasts of wide angle viewing and if you want to even add more people or scenery to the shot, you can do a 120 degree almost panoramic shot which I thought was pretty awesome. Here are some of the selfies I managed to take. They look really good, especially outdoors, but also indoors as well. I went to the extreme and tried them out in very low light and extremely low light conditions. It tried, but most of the shots were very blurry and grainy, but overall a very good performance. So what if you want to take video on this device? But you can take videos on both the front and the back camera and I am impressed by how well it handles the change in light. However, I am disappointed by how shaky the output can get. 
image stabilization is not something that is very well optimized here. It takes 1080p video at 30 frames per second which is pretty fluid. So that's a quick rundown about the camera you get with the Camon C9. It is definitely an upgrade from the C8 and goes on to try and give a good camera experience to photo lovers who don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a camera phone. It retails at around 18,000 Kenyan shillings. There are definitely a few things it needs to correct and upgrade, for example the overexposure and the shaky video, but I cannot complain about the quality of images produced, especially with a selfie camera. So that's it from me. If you like this, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. There are a lot more video reviews so be sure to check those out if you haven't. And as always guys, keep it tech with. Bye.